Hey everybody, Dr. Bulo here, and thanks again for joining us again for another Clinical Conversations. We've got a good evening tonight. We've got, um, I guess there are six of us total, um, two of us on screen, four off, but we've got some really good information for you tonight. Um, and so we're gonna chat with Liz McKenney here in just a minute, but I always want to start these things off by reminding everybody that if you have any questions, even if you're watching the playback later on, um, please feel free to ask questions, I am sure. That Liz can join, especially in this episode, and answer any questions that you may have. I'm also just realizing, I don't know if I silenced my ringer, so if you hear a ringer go off during this, <laughs> it's my fault. Anyhow, Liz, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Thanks it's the first for time. inviting me. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm glad you're here. Um, for those that um, are meeting you for the first time, uh, why don't you just give everyone a little bit of background about yourself and Red Apple Nutrition sure. in Warrendale? Yep. Awesome. Got it. I got it. I got yeah. it. So I am a licensed dietitian nutritionist and a certified nutrition specialist and got also it. a certified leap therapist. So <laughs> All right. So we're going to start <laughs> we're going to pause it and we're going to start right there because that's the whole point of this by the way. Yeah. Is these conversations tend to be with people that have a couple extra initials after their mm -hmm. name and tend to be very passionate about what they do. So why don't you break it down in the order in which you acquired it sure. and where you got it from and okay. why. I'm kind of curious on why. Sure. Yeah. So I actually got my bachelor's degree in um, communications. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. And I worked in marketing for nonprofit organizations for I a couple that. of years. Yeah. And then I just felt this kind of burning passion to, mm -hmm. you know, be in the nutrition and wellness space because I just felt that there was a big hole, right, especially mm. in this area. Um, Pittsburgh is not the healthiest of cities. <laughs> but, uh, no offense, Pittsburgh. Know, we love you. Yes, <laughs> we do. We love you. But, you know. Uh, and so just kind of felt that a lot of what I was seeing in terms of chronic disease states could be prevented with diet and lifestyle in a lot of cases. So you were seeing that prior to getting involved? Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, just in your work, mm -hmm. because it's a little bit more real. Sometimes when we're in clinic, we forget the day-to-day -day kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Where I'm just curious where you were seeing it. Was it family, was it friends? Was it yeah, good relatives that were just not doing as well? What was it? I think probably family and, yeah. and definitely seeing just in a corporate workspace. Yeah, you know, fair just enough. seeing seeing that kind of hit you in the face every day. Yeah. Um, but I have a background in gymnastics and dance. Got so it. it was, you know, from a, a um, physical standpoint, mm -hmm. you know, was always really concerned about that, but realized looking back, you know, what did I really know about how I was fueling my body beyond just kind of watching your intake, you yeah. know. Um, so from that standpoint, always been a little bit interested in that yeah. as well. So I decided to go back and get my master's degree. So mm -hmm. Maryland University of Integrative Health, which is in Laurel, Maryland. Okay. Um, before it was accredited was Thai Sophia Institute. Okay. Uh, so my master's is in clinical nutrition and integrative health. Mm -hmm. um, and I did a six month rotation after that. And then sets you up to take your board certification. So okay. it's a national certification for um, nutrition specialists. So that's a CNS. And Pennsylvania will license CNS's and RDs. So I'm not a registered dietitian. I don't have a four-year undergrad degree, uh, but I have my master's. And so mm. that because I'm board certified, Pennsylvania mm. licenses me as a dietitian nutritionist to Got practice. It. Yeah. Yep. So CNS or MS, CNS, mm -hmm. LDN. Got and it then <laughs> uh, when I started working with Rita, who owns Red Apple, mm -hmm. She is a certified leap therapist, and that is food sensitivity testing. Got so um, we do MRT testing, which stands for mediator release testing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, it's a blood test to determine um, immune activation either through IgG or um, just your standard, you know, white blood cell, histamine, cytokines, lymphocytes um, that cause that inflammation and tissue damage. So it's really, it's a, it's a nice test. It's, it's yeah. an endpoint test. So instead of just looking at IgG, so if anyone's familiar with like Everly Well or, or other kind of companies on the market that mm -hmm. promote food sensitivity testing, um, it's nice because it takes that further step and looks um, at other types of food sensitivities as well. Where do you find the greatest benefit in that? Like where, the limitation you just mentioned, mm -hmm. how does that play out real time? Like what, what type of patients would benefit from having that level of a test as opposed to the standard one? Well, there's a high rate of 
false positives with a standard IgG test. Okay. Um, the MRT test that we use is in the high 90, 90th percentile in terms of how specific it is and how we can reproduce the results. So when they do like split nice. samples, they nice. end up with similar results. So that it's nice to have that. Yeah. Um, type three and type four food sensitivities, that's what we're looking at in the MRT test. So um, type three would be governed by that IgG. Type uh, four, we see more in the migraine irritable bowel field, and so that can actually be missed in some cases hmm. with an IgG test. Got it. Yeah. And just, can you, for, the, for myself really, but someone else may also have this question, <laughs> Can you re-hit those all four types? The oh, um, just in general, not not all. Not if it's, I if, it's, I, if we, we need to be here for a twelve-hour seminar, I, I believe but. they're more in the food allergy mm -hmm. realm. Uh, Susan might know too. Type one is IgE. Yeah, so which type is, one's IgE, and then maybe IgM is type two. That has to do with um, blood types, I think. Is Got that, it. Maybe yeah. Blood so types. the the three and four is where we're seeing. Got the it. biggest in terms of the food sensitivities is what I would say. But IgE is a food allergy. So Got that's it. that immediate reaction. Yeah, that's what I was, that was another yeah. question I was going to say is just to help me break yeah. down the food allergies versus the sensitivities. Because mm -hmm. I had some interactions with food sensitivity testing earlier on, and that was always my question. Because a lot of what came back positive is what our girls were eating. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like, well, if they're inflamed, they're just going to be reacting to whatever they're eating. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's mm -hmm. kind of like, I was curious about if there was a way to distinguish between just a hyperactive system that's just reacting to what you're having, mm -hmm. even though it might be a healthy food stuff, substance, because we eat a pretty healthy diet, versus something that is genetically predisposed or they may have a specific issue with that one right. thing, you know? Yeah, I think that the more inflamed somebody is, the mm -hmm. more, obviously, you'll have increased intestinal permeability, which means yeah. you're having things that belong in your gut are now in the bloodstream. So yeah. think of like mycotoxins mm -hmm. or like lipopolysaccharides that are coming from bacteria or proteins that aren't broken down fully yeah. are now in the bloodstream and then they're causing that inflammation. So the more inflamed someone is, obviously the more leaky gut they have yeah. and then the more food sensitivities they'll have. So sometimes it's not a true sensitivity and once we do gut, some gut healing um, and kind of help to reseal that, that gut lining, so to Got speak, it. we see people be able to tolerate those foods again. But um, it's really just, it's a buildup of inflammation, right? Yeah. Your immune system's hyperactive and then we see kind of some of these symptoms manifest and the, the allergies are immediate, whereas mm -hmm. sensitivities are harder to pinpoint yeah. because they can show up 72 to 96 hours post-ingestion. Yep. So would you say that that's the bulk of, um, um, I don't want to say the bulk of your work, I'm sure you do a lot of different things, but that sounds like something that I know I can think of, I can rile a ton of people in my head that would benefit from just mm -hmm. having that, those kind of panels done, sure. that sort of thing. Um, just out of curiosity, is there a, is there a specific um, category or, 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 you know, half dozen presentations that tend to be just home run excellent for having this sort of work done? Because I know in a lot of our spaces and functional work, whether it's um, rehabilitation mm -hmm. therapy or chiropractic or nutrition or things like that, um, we can help a lot of people, you know what yeah. I mean? And, um, but at the same token, there are certain categories of patient that tend to really shine. So mm -hmm. one of my favorite questions I always ask everybody is, what are the red flag things that we as practitioners should be looking for that would say, holy smokes, is a food sensitivity issue, you know, like, right. you know, thoughts on that? Yeah, I think um, sort of the, the peripheral diagnoses, the diagnoses of exclusion, migraines that don't respond well to medication, mm -hmm. fatigue, um, and, and you know, I, I'm a fan of saying if you hear hoofbeats, look for horses before you look for zebras. Occam's so, razor, right? Yeah, That's you, my favorite. <laughs> yeah, you want to, I think, rule out some of the the glaring causes of things like mm -hmm. fatigue. Well, what's how someone's thyroid? What's the vitamin D and B12 levels? Um, you know, it, uh, what's happening with your blood sugar, right? Yeah. So yeah. looking at that, I think too. And then when you can't really find uh, a uh, an answer. I think mm -hmm. that in terms of the systemic responses that we get from things like food sensitivities, migraine, irritable bowel are really mm -hmm. big causes. But obviously someone with irritable bowel, if they've never been scoped, you know, we yeah. want to know, okay, mm -hmm. do you have Crohn's? Is there colitis? Is mm -hmm. it celiac? So I think ruling out the things that 
seem obvious, yeah. you know, because the food sensitivity testing is a, it's pricey, right? Yeah. So that's the other thing to consider is that not everyone's in a position to go that route right away. Gotcha. Someone walks through my door and they're a millionaire and they're like, what's wrong with me? You Just know, I'm like, <laughs> yes, let's do MRT, yeah. let's do a stool sample, yeah. you know, let's do an organic acids test, but um, it's case specific. Yeah. So. I think that we're probably all sensitive in some regard to certain foods, just yeah. maybe by genetic composition, certain foods don't sit well with us. Um, but I find that in many, many cases, it's it's not a true sensitivity as much as there's something else happening yeah. um, that is predisposing you to being sensitive to a food. And then I, I will just mention too, um, there's that, that compounded piece where we have to talk about how we're growing our food now. Um, yeah. So it, maybe it's not so much a sensitivity to the food itself, but uh, rather, to the right, we're spraying our... <laughs> exactly. And... So that's the other piece too, right? I mean, you had mentioned, you know, people that go abroad and they are totally fine eating the, the pasta and the yeah. gluten over there, and then hmm. they come home and they're sick, you know, as soon as they eat something. That's, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it is very, very interesting. We just don't have the, the same... Standards do you as they see do. like a lot of people that say oh, I go out to eat night like, salads mm -hmm. and I have diarrhea mm -hmm. after my salad mm -hmm. and then spinach. I eat home or yeah, spinach yeah. or whatever. Yeah, what yeah. are your thoughts on that? I am curious because I've had that happen. Yeah. You know, certain foods and it, it's not necessarily. I can't, I can't. I can't say if it's anything consistent in terms of the food group. You know what I mean? But there's just certain. Maybe it's something in the restaurants and how they're preparing it or whatnot mm -hmm. that just how they're just, not cleaning it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, restaurants are, it's like a minefield, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You don't know, you know, you really don't know. Well, um, it is interesting, and I think that's the idea of this, because it's ironic that you mentioned really? some of those things. We have a, um, a testimonial coming out this week of a guy who had Crohn's, mm -hmm. and his Crohn's stuff, like, cleared almost immediately, like, within a couple weeks. Wow. But his history is really extreme. Right. Like he was carted off of football fields multiple times due to head injuries. You know Ooh. what I mean? So his cervical spine was a wreck. And the the vagus nerve, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, has such a huge it's, play. Yeah, amazing. But I like what you're talking about because that's, I think, the impetus of groups like this is that you do your thing, but if, if people aren't coming along the way mm -hmm. that you would expect, then it's kind of time to plug in and right. see what the missing pieces are, things like mm -hmm. that. Um, what would you say, um, and it's kind of the same sort of question, but I'm just curious in terms of, um, well, I, I'll, let me switch the question around because you did say something else that I, I want to hit on. Because these conversations do tend to yield themselves to providers like us locally, what, what are patients looking at in terms of time and finance when it comes to, can we refer someone out to have, how much time is required for the gut to heal? Mm -hmm. And what is the range of cost? Because they're probably going to ask us, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So not to get to pinpoint and right. but it doesn't matter as much directly but it's something that will come up and just to give them a heads up that it's a three months six months a year-long sure. process what are we looking at well i think that we have to um you know think about that there's variability in, sure. in people yeah. you know yeah. and what and it's how, how gung-ho they are right we yeah. know that the gut cells heal pretty rapidly so yeah. you know even getting someone on a good program they might see results within a couple of weeks you know are there but, triggers and i'm sorry to cut you no, off okay. but are there triggers that are like you see everybody's on that 90 percent of them should not be having you know what I mean? When you talk like about like food, yeah. Oh. Are you like get off a of wheat on like everybody? Yeah. Or I'm just uh, curious. Okay. <laughs> I it I am a, a big proponent of saying okay if your symptoms are kind of showing me X Y Z I think doing a trial of mm. at least gluten free is yeah. big. Like if someone That's has joint pain or migraines or irritable bowel or mm -hmm. whatever it is, it's worth getting rid of it. Yeah. I mean, and then of course you we factor in the genetic modification. So now we're eating all these new proteins that we haven't evolved to digest well, and gluten is the main one. Okay, yeah. so like corn and soy f factor in there as well. Yeah. But yeah. I mean doing a trial of gluten-free is sometimes worth it with someone that has gut issues versus a full elimination diet or doing something really restrictive like the FODMAP diet because it takes a toll on somebody. Gotcha. Um, and if they feel as though it's not worth it, mm -hmm. then you lose them. Yeah. So I think that it's working with people as individuals, figuring out where they are in terms of how ready are they to really kind of change yeah. their life. I mean, I have some people who walk in the door and they're eating, you know, the white stuff for breakfast, lunch, mm -hmm. and dinner. Um, they're <laughs> not going to go gluten-free, right? Yeah. They're, they're going to say, okay, like, 
you know, that's, yeah. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, well, how about some, you know, we get you on a bread with some fiber or we do organic and make mm -hmm. sure it's sprouted. So uh, there's, Baby steps. yeah, it's, there's, it's shades of gray, yeah. <laughs> if you will. Um, yep. But I mean, for someone who's committed to kind of getting their, their gut health right, I mean, and there are so many factors that play into that too. So mm. someone could have the cleanest diet in the world, but they're mentally a wreck, right? Mm -hmm. Stress is huge mm -hmm. um, in terms of what's happening in the gut and, and your microbiome. So uh, again, to your point where we refer out and it's so this whole person approach, mm -hmm. right? We know, yes, a part of what I do is making sure you're healthy on the inside, but are you healthy on the outside? What, how's your spine? You know, maybe sure. you could, you know, go to some PT or whatever mm -hmm. it is. So I think looking at it from, yes, the whole person, you need that whole person approach to be truly healthy yeah. is, is important because it's only a small piece when I do, but it's, it's the greater community that we can, you know, refer out to and, cool. and partner with. You know. And so you've been with Red Apple Nutrition for how long now? So it'll be two years in the spring. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. Well, probably, if you guys have any questions, you can chime in here in, in just a minute. But my, one of my last questions that I always kind of um, engage in is I'm always curious to see what drives people in terms of, we kind of know how you got into it, just mm -hmm. seeing the need and just kind of being a high performance person yourself. Um, but any line of work, especially when you're interacting and you're mm -hmm. pouring into people is, can be exhausting. So right. what keeps you charged? What keeps you coming back? What do you like about what you do? I think um, there are, times of course where you just feel like am I really am I doing any good here right <laughs> are, are people listening is it going in one ear and out the other okay um, and then of course you you know you have your big win stories that are awesome. So give me a win story I want to know okay. I want to hear a win All right, story. Yeah, so I had I a this. lady <laughs> who was referred to me by her therapist okay mm -hmm. so she has um, unremitting Crohn's mm -hmm. okay so just this constant constant diarrhea she couldn't lose weight um, just kind of um, in a miserable place, just not feeling good. Yeah. And um, we did um, kind of just, we went the standard elimination diet route sure. with her. She was kind of ready to tackle that, but wasn't quite, didn't have the funds sure. to, to do the food sensitivity test. So the elimination diet has its drawbacks, of course, but it's, it's a good place to start for someone who can't test. Um, and so we did the elimination diet, we did some gut healing. So we added in a spore-based probiotic, a prebiotic specifically designed to only feed beneficial strains of bacteria. Mm -hmm. And then we did um, a mucosal lining healer. Mm -hmm. So we put her on a gut healing protocol. She did the elimination diet. She came back in six weeks and she's like, I'm, you know, I'm in a, a great place. She looked like a new person. That's I was, cool. I That's was awesome. like amazed. Okay. Yeah. So she had lost 20 pounds. Nice. She was feeling great. She's like, I don't even have these cravings anymore. I don't miss any, I don't yeah. miss grains. I don't miss the dairy. <laughs> she just was in an amazing place. And she said, you know, like I have a lot of mental components that have held me back for a long time that she didn't feel that she deserved to feel well. Wow, and she just realized, Super you know, she's like, I wanted to do this for me. I want to yeah. live. I want to live, and I want to live a long life. And that was that was really amazing. That's pretty to cool. See. Yeah, That's when someone cool. is really committed and coming from a place where I didn't feel like I deserve to feel good. I mean, that's wow. just that's insane, right? Yeah, it's amazing. Um, so that's a really, that's awesome. But I think too, I, we're in a scary place and, and I think we're kind of, as a country, poised on a brink of a national health crisis. You think so? I think so, yeah. I think so, and it's scary. But at the same time, I mean, empowering in a way because it, it's something that we can change. A lot we can't, but a lot starts with yourself and your family and your community. And yep. it's not scaring people. It's not being the food police. You know, it's not running around mm -hmm. smacking food out of people's hands, <laughs> right? But it's it's saying, you know, well, what's one or two small things that you can do I for actually, your health? I think it, I don't know about you guys, but I think, and I don't know if it's 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 how long you've been doing it or whatnot. But as far as I can tell. It seems like culturally, it's become trendy to be healthy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so maybe we're, we may the new might, generation. Yeah. Coming up. So the crisis yeah. may be in a certain line there somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, generationally. Yeah. But like all the millennials, man, they yeah, love to be. They, they wear that organic badge, and they, you know. So hopefully, it is yeah. shifting a little bit. You know what I mean? Just yep. with I hope. social media and all the rest. I hope. Yeah, yeah, I hope. And it's just the things that are killing us now are not the things that were killing people 100 years ago. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's not like 
it wasn't pneumonia and the plague, now it's yeah. diabetes. Yeah. I mean, and, and I think the CDC is saying one in three to one in five by mm -hmm. 2050 will have diabetes. Type two, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's that's all. It seems like that's a very that's lifestyle <laughs> scary, yeah. driven disorder. It yeah. is very, very much so, um, and it's entirely preventable. Yeah, you know, I, I do have people come in and say, "Well, I know why I have diabetes, and it's because my dad had it." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that maybe a little bit of your risk? Of the is that? Nature yeah, versus exactly. nurture, right? Yeah. Yes. Question. Yeah, please. That's what I was going to um, say. In your training and in your practice, would you agree or disagree with this comment? My suspicion is that uh, people that have high sympathetic tone are people that have, are more prone to have sensitivities. Uh, would you? I don't disagree? know. I don't. I don't know if I've noticed a correlation. But now that you've said something, I'll try to <laughs> keep track. And actually, a to bit that more. point, to yeah. that point, because I think I would agree with it. But what I'd be curious from, because I know you're doing a lot of that. I have some thoughts on it. But what would you be, Claire? What would you be? looking for, what would she be looking for to see if someone is hypersympathetic? You know what I mean? We believe that we believe that the right hemisphere is primarily the, the part of our brain that controls a lot of the um, autoimmune things. So oh, you okay. see you see most of the kids that we treat that would be considered ADHD mm -hmm. or on the spectrum or any of the other letters that you want to throw out, uh, yeah. O C D, O D D, mm -hmm. which are simply variations on a theme. You know they almost exclusively have sensitivities to something. Yeah. So when we talk about the elimination diet that mm -hmm. we talk about, um, when they go off of it, you know, in, tr in midstream, you know, you see real crazy behaviors right. occur, you know, whether it's a school-related thing, learning-based, or whether it's a behavioral-based either at school or at home. So I'm thinking that most of the kids that stay on, a, stay on the diet consistently mm -hmm. do really well, and when they don't, it's because if something goes awry, as I was telling you, sure. that's because of food. Right. So then the question would be, are those kids, are that, is that population, the, the children that we might call underconnected on the right hemisphere, mm -hmm. are they predisposed to sensitivities? I would say yes, um, now that I understand what right. you mean. Because we right. think the same thing with allergies, for example. Mm -hmm. they, tend to be, yeah. they tend to be more the people that have allergies or have um, uh, asthma, mm -hmm. you know, all yeah. those kind of things that really shouldn't be factors in a normal life right. that they have. Yeah. Yeah, it's, and it's and funny. You should be able to pick that up when you, that it doesn't take long when you're in front of your clients. Right. I thought that might happen. A high level of anxiety. There. Yeah. You know, they, they talk a lot, they, you know, they mm -hmm. repeat themselves, et cetera. You know, yeah. And, oh, yeah. And in case it didn't come out um, clearly, what you're saying, Doc, the, um, the sympathetics, uh, just for those watching back, what Larry Schultz was pointing out was just how sympathetic dominance will shut down the immune response and the vagus tone down to the mm -hmm. digestive system, which is then going to predispose all these kids that are typically marked up as being over sympathetic, ADD, ADHD. Mm -hmm. He was mentioning all the letters, right? <laughs> Any letter you want to add on to yeah. it, and might predispose them. And mm -hmm. that's it's funny that you were here because literally on my whiteboard back there, that's what we were trying to just put information out to the general mm -hmm. population was that brain gut connection there and it's kind of a chicken and egg sort of thing right and then, you know right. so it's kind of neat. Goes to the whole cultural thing that, yeah. that she was talking about which is that you know there's a there's a crisis brewing in this country mm -hmm. yeah but it's a sort of a silent one because it's not something that smacks you in the face all mm -hmm. the time but insidiously over time we start to see a, a changing population of people that are more prone to sympathetic tone, high sympathetic yeah tone, it's a stressful anxiety, time mm -hmm. you know they live in a black and white world you know, they can't tolerate uh, any disagreement. You know, yep. they, they tend to label. <clears throat> you know, they're very fragile, yep. you know, et cetera. And so it's like, is that a combination of, is that a collective or is it really driven by specific areas as mm -hmm. a result of something else? And it sort of ties itself together. Right. And here we are talking about it as if these are individual pieces of the puzzle with the whole reason that we're here collegially mm -hmm. is to realize Bring it all that together. we all are sort of on the same, right. in the same domain trying to solve problems from a process standpoint yeah. uh, and eliminate a lot of the turf things that get in the way yeah. Yeah. of uh, thinking we know everything. Yeah. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's nice knowing that you got, and you guys are in Warndale, right? Mm -hmm. But having a resource like that where you can have those things checked, just take one stressor out of that multifaceted mm -hmm. equation is kind of nice to know. Sure. Um, I want to close it down to give us time to converse a little bit more. Do you guys have any other questions for Liz by any chance? 
If you guys have questions just watching back or listening to the playback, just let us know. You know just message it on there. Like I said, Liz, you can, I'm sure, chime yeah, in and answer any questions. Um, do you have any last words for specifically practitioners in the area, but mm -hmm. also just general public? A lot of our, our very analytical patients may tag on to this. I've m mentioned it to those of my right. patients that tag on. But, um, but, but my passion is specifically for practitioners that might have patients that um, may want to connect with you, mm -hmm. just what's the easiest way, or just any last thoughts for folks that are um, listening or, or watching the playback? Sure. Yeah, I think, um, you know, if you have patients in your, in your practice or people that you know in your, in your life that are dealing with things that are kind of these vague systemic type symptoms, mm -hmm. migraines, um, gut health problems, uh, fatigue, you know, um, energy problems, things like that. I mean, I think that there's a big connection with what's happening in our guts and what we see kind of present, um, especially with mood things as well. So anxiety, depression, we know mm. there, there's a big connection, obviously, there with the gut-brain connection. Um, but food helps, and it's, it's food first in a lot of cases. So either food is going to hinder your progress or help your progress. Yeah. Um, and we always start with Right. What What's your diet like before yeah. you jump again to the the the, the amazing you know diagnoses or whatever it is or or the supplement protocols or whatever? Well, what's on your plate? Yeah. And and you start there and then you kind of build outward. So it's it's um, it's a simple process <laughs> at least in the beginning. <laughs> but it's fundamental, man. It's critical. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. we got to start there. You got to get people on board with the basics before you get. Um, into the more complicated realm. What is the range of the cost of the MRT? The MRT is four nineteen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yep. So um, and that um, you get the whole packet, um, and then we do accept a lot of the com the bigger commercial insurances. So the the visit with me might be covered by our insurance, but any of the testing that we do is generally not. Okay. Yeah. And how can we, as individual clients or as practitioners, access you guys? Where you're. Uh, RedAppleNutrition.com, I'm guessing? Yeah, so RedAppleNutrition.com. Got it. Um, we are on Instagram. We're on Facebook. Cool. Um, you can email me, Liz, at RedAppleNutrition.com if you have questions or you want to know more about our practice um, or engage with us on social media. We always love that. We have awesome recipes and stuff that That's we right. post off, uh, often. We do blogs. Um, so even if you have a, a topic that you're interested in and would like to know more about, you know, put it in the comments, and we're happy to kind of unpack that a little bit. Awesome. Thank yeah. you so much for coming Thank out, and thanks you. for hanging out. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Be sure to engage if you have questions. Share if you know someone that could use the information, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye now. There we go.